supposedly the group's up here, so let's see. Okay, so we came in. We came up here. Up there, and yep. we've, where are we okay. now, we're right? We came in here, do, 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 do. you are here. Okay, and where are we thinking of going? Oh, I don't know, I mean, the, it goes probably another mile and a half all the way down. You want you up for it? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, well, we made it up to Hermit Park Open Space, and we're supposed to meet up with the, the rest of the Plain Air Artists of Colorado group, and we don't know where they are. But this place is really cool. It's super out of the way and quiet um, compared to Rocky Mountain National Park, which is just a little bit over the hill. And uh, this is a good backup place if uh, the main park is overflowing with uh, tourists and people. I mean, listen. Nothing. It's perfectly quiet. I love it. Yeah, and all the aspen are starting to change, but we've had so much rain this year that I think it's just going to kind of go to a dull yellow instead of that really brilliant, insane yellow. But, I mean, it's just the beginning of the season, so we'll see. Just came across some tracks here, some deer tracks, probably mule deer. If they were bigger, they'd be elk. This is really unusual to see flowers this late in September. It's in the aster family, I believe. Not pretty. So we're hiking along looking for a spot to paint and a lot of people don't know when they come here what these mysterious piles are. They're not Bigfoot bonfires. <laughs> uh, this is actually what they do uh, to mitigate fire uh, when it comes through. They take a lot of the old brush and stuff and they put it down here and then they move it out later. So I've lost Christine again. Marco! Oh. <laughs> You're supposed to say polo. No. <laughs> you can't tell me what to do. All right. <laughs> and yeah, and we found a shelter. Or actually, I think, I don't know if it's so much a shelter as it is uh, more brush mitigation. But it, I don't know. It looks like. There's a fire pit right there. Somebody. Oh, they did. Oh. Thing. It's Bigfoot. It is, truly. We've hiked a ways in here, and now I'm gonna uh, try to uh, climb to the top of this rock pile here to see what we can see. Whew. Uh, I made it to the top. This one looks grafted. I know. This is the way the trunk is. Yeah, this is fascinating because this is probably a really windy ridge. We've seen a lot of knocked over trees. But look at this. It's coming out of the ground. That's the root. This is where it fell over. And the trees grew out of... You know, I wonder if the, it might be the original tree or it might be trees that grew out of the tree. Could be. It's hard to say. I'm guessing it's actually the, the original tree. Yeah. That's wild. Isn't that crazy? 
And I don't know why, but this is one of my favorite things to come across. You'll have all these pine trees and you'll have this one little baby pioneer aspen. And, you know, in a hundred years time, this could be just an entire grove of aspen. But they're so little. It's cool. And here's some older ponderosa pine. And you can tell these guys are at least a hundred years old because um, their bark has turned color to an orangey tone and also um, the lower... Well, hello there. <laughs> That's a gray jay. It was very unhappy mm -hmm. uh, But they also, um, the branches have come away because when they're younger, they, they branch out like regular looking pine trees. But once they reach 100, they go like this. And that way they're protected against any fires that, you know, mild fires that come through. Because uh, they need fire to actually propagate themselves. Look at that. Awesome. And they smell like, the bark smells like vanilla. Oh, God, it smells so good. I wish we had smell of vision so you could smell how good that smells. And check out this aspen here. Something happened in his history to make him have a fork like that. That's cool. Man, it's such a nice day. So dapply and pretty that... I don't even know if we're going to have time to paint. We've just been enjoying walking around for like the last part of an hour. Well, if this is not a trail, is that like, this is not a pipe? <laughs> no, they just don't want people traipsing around on there. So I think I found my subject once again. These trees right here just kind of spoke to me. It's going to be a real challenge because they're all dappled in the light and there's a dark background behind it, which means I'm going to have to do some negative painting. But uh, we're going to give it a go and hopefully the breeze will stay down. I put up my umbrella, but as we know, it might pick up later on with the wind. So let's get going. Okay, let's see. So I've made it this way today. So I can get more of the, the tree shapes the way I want them to be the focus. Again, we don't have to slavishly copy the branch shapes, but get the general direction. That's the important thing. Okay. And I'll keep doing that. Okay, so I got that done. And normally I would use my masking tape to mask this uh, and put and cut away with a Zacto knife and I, for I forgot my Zacto knife. So um, we're going to try my old little pocket knife here and see if it works. And if not, well, lesson learned. Okay, so I had to take this down so it doesn't blow away while I'm doing this. But as you can see, the, the pencil line's under here and I'll take this and we'll just cut into it. But I'm going to uh, do this <laughs> without the camera because it's a little dangerous with sharp objects. So just give me a second. Okay. And then take this, pull it off, maybe. Oh, there we go. See? Yeah, this isn't working as good. This is a bit of a dull tip on here. So as you can see, I'm going to have to try to pull this away here again. Hmm. Okay, well that 
that took a lot longer than I thought it would, but now you can see I've got my lights there and I'll be able to paint behind them without it getting all messed up. So I've pre-mixed my colors here. You can see we got our sky behind here and this leaves starting to turn. So I got my blues, my cloud cover color and the first layer for the trees. Okay, so we press these in as good as we can. Hopefully it'll stay down, and if not, it's okay. It's an experiment. Okay. Oops, and I just remembered that's where the, <laughs> where the leaves are going to be. Oops. I'm already messing up. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna turn this off for a second. Okay, so I got my sky background in here and it's still quite damp, so I'm gonna wait just a little bit to time it so I can put in these leaves. See, I'm still letting this dry a little bit because see how these have a little bit harder edges. So then I get these in and then we'll do the others here. And I got my, oops, and I've got my bamboo brush, which gives a little bit more randomness to the leaves. Once again, I'm using a lot of my raw sienna instead of the bright, bright yellows at this point. I don't even know if I'm going to put in a lot of bright yellow because, uh, as you can see, it might be too clashy if I did that. But yeah, this is my favorite. I like making little leaves. It's moving the brush. Give it some variety. Little dots, because aspen leaves are tiny. I'll go back in and do all this stuff here. Just real loose, nothing exacting. And I'll add a bit of the green that I put there. So it can kind of bleed into itself. Leave a few little patches open. It's hard to do when I'm holding a camera, but we'll see if we can do it. Close with that grass, so we'll do this kind of sideways motion to get the grass in there and kind of just get the idea of that. I'm make it look like it's on fire. <laughs> up some darker green shadowy colors. We'll start adding those bits in here because you can see there's little dark bits of shadow and it's still wet in here so get it nice and soft.
Hopefully it'll blossom out. It's kind of dry once again. I know I'm always complaining about how dry it is here in Colorado, but it's even more so when you're at altitude here. Yeah, normally this would be bleeding in more. But that's okay. It'll still look cool. Just gotta work really fast. darker green and I've been adding in little streaks here to do some negative painting to give the idea of these trees back here but not actually paint them individually see how it just kind of makes them go into the distance and it'll really pop up hopefully <laughs> if this works we'll see uh, now that this is almost dry enough I'll, I'll do the grass here in a minute but actually let's see I'll let this dry in the sun for just a minute Christine's over here in her little corner. How's it going? Uh, just getting the base. Oh, wow. oh yeah. Something look something at that. Cool. But yeah, look at this. We got this whole place to ourselves practically. There's a breeze, but it's not too bad. I'm, I'm, I'm now. <laughs> Watch, it's gonna get breezy now that I've said that. Well, but. do you see the clouds? How they built up already? Mm -hmm. From staying. Yeah, I think it's just gonna be a two-layer day for me. Two-layer. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> means you put one layer down. You yeah. let it thoroughly dry as best you can, which uh -huh. is easy, good, considering how dry it is up here. And then you, you do go. the next layer on top. Ah. And that's why it's called. And a lot of studio pieces will be six or seven or even more. Mm -hmm layers so planner we don't got that kind of time we got time for that mm -mm. And uh, the mountains are definitely cooling off because it means it takes a little longer for this to dry, even though I was complaining about it a minute ago. This was sopping wet. And uh, it's still cool, though. And if it's cool, that means it's still damp underneath. So I let it lay there just for a little bit longer. a little impatient so we're gonna try one of these and see how it's going uh, hope it works <gasps> look at that Whoa. Whoa. okay I'm gonna have to turn the camera off and do this by hand just to make sure I don't mess it up slightly long nails doing this. See, it's almost noon, which is when they normally do the critique, but just like on cue, as soon as it hits noon, the sun just goes boosh and hides behind these clouds. So, all right, I'm going to have to hurry along here because, yeah, I've got 10 minutes to finish this. <laughs> Let's see if it's going to be possible. Just 
just using the side of my brush. It's so much fun. This is why I like using cold pressed paper, because you can get this kind of textury thing going. Mm, and I just I just realized much to my horror that I was going to fill this up last night with cobalt violet and I forgot. So we're gonna have to do an emergency mix. Just made a mix called Rose of Ultramarine, I think is what some companies call it, which is basically um, permanent rose and French ultramarine blue. So if you don't have cobalt violet, this can work in a pinch. But yeah, now that I have taken off the tape, I'm going to be real careful when I put the shadows in and around here. And this is why it's really important for this to be nice and dry, because I made a shadow color here. And I'm going to be, see all these shadows? I'm going to be putting those in with the brush. Okay, well, it looks like we might not make the critique because <laughs> we started so late, but I got my shadows in and uh, we're going to do some stuff with the grass here while this dries before putting in the, the details here. There we go, oh, that's looking good. If I do say so myself. Okay, now my favorite part, the jewelry is what I call this. Got my little... Vinci brush here and mixed up some shadow not shadow the black part of the tree color I don't know what to call that these bits so much fun I could just fiddle and do this forever but gonna have to hurry up because the group's critique is starting up and ah, let's see here so we've got these little, little nodes I think is what these are and you got little ones here that tend to grow out little branches like that yeah do you hear that that's the the jays the gray jays they're telling each other hey a bunch of sucker artists are having their lunch let's go snag some food from them. <laughs> Just talked to some nice people that walked, hiked past us. But yeah, you can see, see how it's just getting built up with the little marks there. A little bit more definition here, and then I'm going to put, put in some little black branches, because if you look, even though they're white, there's little areas that are black. I don't know why the plants do that, but it's kind of unique. And they got these little bowls. I would think that's what they call these. And you have to remember that they don't all grow out sideways. Some of them kind of, you know, go straight up like that. Oh. Yep, there goes the umbrella. I'm going to take that down. Okay, this is looking really good. I think I'm just gonna add a little bit deeper shadow here, like you 
you can see here and now I'm gonna let that dry but in the meantime I'm gonna get some dark green see those there's a few little pine trees I might just lace those in really quick just to give it a little bit of some of the contrast in here So you just real loose, work in some more down here, little bushy things. Also make these stand out a little bit. Whoops. Running out of time, I'm already a little bit late. I think I'm gonna put in one more little guy here, like just teeny tiny. Because you see how there's one hiding over there? I'm just gonna... Don't overthink it, just... Put him in there. Yeah, maybe maybe give him one more friend so it doesn't look so weird by himself. Okay, I think we're good enough to show the group and then we'll do more in the studio if we feel like it. Yeah, that was fun. Take a look. Forgot to ask Christine to see what she finished with. Nice. Look at that. I like the, what was that, a gel pen that you used on there? Yeah, it's just a white jelly roll pen. That's such a good idea. Yeah. So, I found it in my bag of tricks. <laughs> and yeah, I was like, ooh, I should use that. So I pulled it out and just did it. Christine has a lot of tricks. Awesome. Watch me make this painting disappear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going down the mountain now. Because look at this, look at this weather. Just like clockwork, storm clouds. <laughs> I wasn't filming, but we almost got wiped out by this truck that went flying around a bend with this big old, he was- it An RV bus? Yeah, an RV pulling bus an pulling an SUV and just like no room on the road for either of us. So yeah, lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs>